Hello, everybody. I um, hope you're all keeping well and safe. Uh, thank you so much for joining me on my first ever Facebook q and I'm a little bit nervous because I'm so used to talking about my life as an actor. And here I am talking about things that are more personal, mental health, um, having Crohn's disease. Um, and it's so nice. I am slightly nervous um, because it can feel quite daunting um, talking about these things. Um, and I think for so many years, I've suppressed all of it and kept quiet uh, with the fear of, of, of being different. Um, but I've started to notice such a change in my life by being open and owning the disease and celebrating it, celebrating the lows um, as well as the highs. And I've noticed a huge impact it's had on my mental health as well. I feel... I feel free um, and I feel, uh, you know, in the last year or so, I've been able to concentrate on things that I, I never thought I would, you know, like connecting with long lost friends, uh, learning to drive, putting life um, first. I thought it'd be good uh, to start this Q&A by talking a little bit before I get into questions and um, just talking a little bit about my experience with the disease and just uh, share my story as it were. So I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease in 2006. I think at that time uh, there was no social media and um, I didn't really have access to the wealth of information that's out there now, uh, especially Crohn's and Colitis UK, you know, are working incredibly hard to put so much information out there, I didn't have access to that then. And to be honest, I didn't really make much of an effort to find out more about it. You know, from my understanding, I was diagnosed with something and I believe that, you know, when a doctor diagnoses you with something, you get medication, you take the medication and then it goes. That's what I thought Crohn's disease was. I didn't really comprehend that this was a chronic illness, uh, a chronic disease. I just thought it would go away. So I sat in silence. I didn't really tell people about it. I know some family members were sending me little bits of information, but I just um, ignored it and, and sat um, in silence and carried on with my life. And looking back on it now, I'm just thinking that I just felt totally um, unconnected to myself, unconnected to my body. I think I you know, I just took it for granted. And I think over the co course of the years, I kind of abused my body in a way, like I didn't really keep an eye on my health. Um, I smoked uh, quite a bit as well. Um, and the disease strangely went into remission. So it, it was more of a reason to kind of not really do anything about it, not really make a conscious effort to speak to anybody about it either but then in 2016 so from 2006 to 2016 I started to get really bad flare-ups um, I call them flare-ups now at the time I didn't know what the hell was happening to me I, I was uh, I was bleeding I was having very very bad cramps um, I was losing weight to make matters worse I was filming a television series in New York as well which uh, required me to be very, very physically active. And I was terrified because I didn't know what was happening to my body. And at the same time, I was terrified that I was going to lose the one thing that I loved, which was being an actor. Again, I, I got put on steroids and I went into denial mode again. But over the next kind of couple of years, I started to get really bad flare ups and I started to get really frustrated about the stop and start. Um, in my life, I'd seem to uh, progress and then having flare ups would set me back again. And I'd feel like I'd get really physically fit and I'd get a flare up and everything would have to start again. And I felt really low. Um, and I realized it was also having an effect um, on my mental health as well. I'm not sure if the, the Crohn's disease was exacerbating my mental health or um, there were potential mental health issues before uh, that I'd been carrying for years that I was just avoiding. 
but it got to a point after like the third or fourth fifth even flare up and also having to go to hospital um i just went i've had enough of this and i also realized at that time that you don't have to suffer in silence there's there's an there's answers out there and i know the crohn's and colitis uk charity who are with me now in the background uh, during this conversation are going to be um up uploading loads of different links as well to 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 show you guys just the amount of support that's out there including themselves so it got to a point where i sat i was like i'm not going to suffer in silence and I'm, I'm now a firm believer that if you <laughs> strange as it sounds if if you want something to change really badly if you put it out in the universe the universe will listen uh, even though at that time i was like i don't know what <laughs> what what's out there i'm gonna put it out there I'm going to go on social media and I'm going to say, hey, I've, I've got a problem uh, and I'm, I'm going to own it by simply sharing my story. And the thing as well with Crohn's disease uh, is, and this happened to me the other day, actually, I was in a restaurant um, and uh, I, I'm not drinking at the moment. And the manager of the restaurant was like, oh, I'd love to you know, get you a drink. And um, I was like, oh no, I'm not drinking. And the next kind of question is, oh, why are you not drinking? And, and now I'm trying to be much more confident in owning the disease. And I'll clearly say, oh, I've got Crohn's disease. The next question that follows is either they know about the disease, which is great. And a lot of people do, but some people don't. And this person didn't. And I'm trying to be more articulate about explaining exactly what it is. And he proceeded to, you know, try and, uh, you know, give me some more alcohol. Um, but I, I kind of realized then as well that he, he said to me, you know, you look totally fine. And that's the thing with Crohn's disease is on the outside, you look, I look totally fine. Uh, but inside my, my body, uh, is attacking itself. Um, and I think that's why for so many years as I, I was in den denial because I just wasn't coming across people like me. Um, but when things got really bad and I kind of put it out in the universe, it was amazing. And it, it just by simply talking about it and just putting out on the universe and sharing my story, I was overwhelmed by the amount of support that I got from people who didn't know about the disease and, and wanted to learn more. But more specifically, the Crohn's and colitis um, community that came forward and were immensely uh, supportive. I then made a conscious effort to just kind of just an everyday life is just kind of be around of those that I'm meeting. And suddenly I was coming across people who also had Crohn's disease and someone who's become a close friend of mine. Uh, now, um, I, I remember meeting and just having that connection and going, I've got Crohn's disease. I've got Crohn's disease too. And, and suddenly like even now talking about it, I feel like you just feel free. You feel like, ah, I'm not on my own. So once I started kind of putting stuff out there, I then um, linked up with Crohn's and Colitis UK, their charity uh, through social media. And there I saw the It Takes Guts campaign. And it seemed like they were doing it on a bigger level and they were connecting all of us in the Crohn's and Colitis um, community and, 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 and encouraging us to share our story. Now with Instagram, I find Instagram a little bit of a complex world sometimes because, you know, we only post about the things, the, the, the good times, or we pretend that everything's good and we kind of take a, a selfie. And I don't think it's always um, accurate about what's going on. But what I was really overwhelmed by was with the It Takes Guts campaign. There were people who were, you know, sharing the highs, but also sharing the lows. And the lows really resonated with me because I'd been sitting on these lows for so long. And suddenly I was reading stories about people who'd gone through the same thing as me. And, and again, I was just like, ah, this is, this is great. The, you know, the Crohn's and Colitis UK charity are creating awareness. And I think we underestimate the, the impact that has by simply, um, simply talking about it and we shouldn't underestimate the impact um that has on it has on us um it's important as well that by creating awareness we're not just creating an awareness for the um 
for those who have Crohn's and colitis. We're also creating an awareness of those that don't um, know about the disease. And that's incredibly important because it's amazing. I was just having this conversation literally about five minutes ago. For so many years when I was doing, uh, starting a new job, I just didn't tell anybody about it. And I wonder why, I kind of still question why I, why I didn't tell anybody. Not only did I not tell anybody about the, the, you know, the Crohn's and colitis, but I didn't tell anybody that I was struggling with my mental health either. I think in some way, from my own experience, I felt that I was, you know, was I broken? Was I, had I failed in some way? Was I putting too much pressure on myself? Um, did I, did I assume that people wouldn't understand? So it's important that we strive to continue um, creating an awareness. So those we come across, whether it be our family members, our employers, our teachers, uh, our closest friends are also aware of it. So therefore we have more of a confidence to say, I'm not feeling great today. Um, and I need these kinds of provisions in place and we shouldn't be um, ashamed of it. Also, there's something so nice, like when I share my story with people, I get this kind of release. I get to, to get it off my chest. I get to find clarity with it. I get to try and find the words. But at the same time, by sharing my story, it encourages others to do the same. And I, I feel good about that because I also then get to hear about other people's stories as well. Um, I don't feel alone, but I also get to know about um, tips and advice, things I may not have tried. This is, this is a chronic illness that it, it, it's still evolving. There's, there's, there's new discoveries uh, happening all the time. There's still a lot of research that needs to be done. So by sharing these little bits of information, I get to understand it a little bit more. And I get to own it. I, I, I get to kind of say, this is, this is a part of me. For so many years, I just pushed it away. And now it's about celebrating it and, and owning it. And this is what I'm doing today. Um, so I want to thank everybody so much from the bottom of my heart and the Crohn's and Colitis UK charity for being here today and allowing me to do this. So I'm going to launch into um, some of the um, questions from you guys um so the first question is why did you want to host this facebook live so the q a is of course about my experience with uh crohn's disease but i'm really interested and I'm, re I'm really keen to hear from you guys as well because i'm still trying to discover all of this and figure it all out so why not just put it out there and see see what comes back because th this q a is about my crohn's but it's also how the crohn's has affected my mental health now it's important to clarify here that you know it's nice you know we all have crohn's disease or colitis but our experience with with having the disease can can differ, and it's it's important to kind of um, talk about our differences and how we how our bodies uh, react to it, and um, because how my body reacts to it may be different to someone else's. So I'm also keen to know about how how other people are experiencing the disease. But for me, I've I've really felt that there is a link between the brain and my my bowel. I kind of see the bowel um, as a second brain. So if my mental health is unstable or I'm feeling anxious, it feels like my Crohn's is also triggered as well. I think we focus so much on healing the bowel, which is important that we don't spend enough time here. <laughs> you know, this, the mind, as I'm discovering, is a very, is a very complex mechanism. We can't see it. You know, we, <laughs> We, we go to the gym to, to, to produce physical results. We see it and we go, hey, it's working. We don't quite know what's going on internally. So we don't really access it. We don't really nurture it. And I've noticed that the more I've concentrated on my mental health, the more I've focused on figuring out what's in there, figuring out how I feel, really understanding how things have um, affected and shaped me. It's had a real positive impact 
um, on my um, on my gut um, as well. If I nurture this, I'm also nurturing um, my uh, my gut as well. And I know uh, the Crohn's and Colitis UK charities. When I first had conversations with them, are also um, uh, looking into this more. Um, and I know with the post today, which is brilliant, kind of amazing uh, timing as well that we we did this q a and it's um world mental health day on saturday so it's it, it couldn't be more apt to talk about mental health and the reason why i'm also talking about mental health is i feel like us guys we're kind of conditioned not to talk about our emotions and we suppress it and it's amazing aside from those who have crohn's disease how many guys also suffer in silence uh, and then suddenly they're having these physical reactions like I did, like re real severe bouts of anxiety and not knowing what to do and and then feeling like you're on your own with it. Or as I was feeling, I felt like I, I, there was no kind of fix to this. Uh, it was it just it was better to just to just um, suffer in silence. So I guess by talking and being a guy myself, I'm trying to create more of an awareness so we can recondition some of that behavior and say it's all right to talk. And also there is a huge amount of support um, out there as well. And I know the Crohn's and Colitis UK charity will be posting links um, as well. Um, and also, so it, yeah, I always get put off slightly by social media, but there are benefits. It's, it's brilliant. Like I'm sitting in my room right now and I'm able to to communicate with all of you and 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 share my story and, and reach loads of people, not just the people I, I come across with in everyday life, um, as it were. Um, so I'm going to the next question here is, um, how would you go about telling new people about your condition? Okay, for so so for like I said before, for for so many years. I didn't tell anyone about my condition. Um, I just suffered in complete silence. Uh, I was incredibly worried that it would strip me of the one thing that I love. And to be honest, the only thing that I can do, <laughs> which is being an actor. Uh, and I felt that it would, it would jeopardize everything. Um, and I think one of the things I've realized is <laughs> I've underestimated people I've underestimated the human race and actually how supportive people can be and, and it relates to something I was talking about earlier is why did I not just be upfront from the beginning and be honest uh, and I wish I wish I'd done it sooner because yes you come across people who don't know about the disease but it's amazing how many people who haven't got Crohn's or, or colitis want to know about it and actually I had to play catch up. I had to go away and really understand what was happening to me um, and try and be uh, as articulate as possible and, and, and uh, 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 articulate as well in expressing exactly what it was that I, I needed. Um, I try and be um, as clear and concise as well and not be afraid of owning it and being honest about the uh, the effect it's it's having on me especially when it comes when it comes to my mental health as well like I, I was having a conversation with a friend the other day and this is kind of for actors as well why when I'm doing a scene and I suddenly feel really anxious why do I just get caught up in it why am I afraid sometimes to take the director aside or a producer and say I just need a little bit of support right now or give me an extra five minutes and it's amazing actually how supportive um you know, people can be. And I, I realize if I, especially in a filming job, if I tell people, you know, right at the beginning, they can then put the necessary uh, provisions in place. So as an actor, just making sure that there's a right, there's the right food um, available for me as well. Um, a kind of a huge discovery that I made um, when it, with regards to telling people about my condition for years, know that I suffered from Crohn's disease um, and only recently have I actually sat him down and talked to him about it and been really really honest about the effect that it's had on me um, and again I was overwhelmed by how supportive he was and I don't know why I thought otherwise um, 
and he's been a, a huge support. So I guess the advice I can I, I can give for those who aren't actors is don't be afraid of telling your nearest and dearest. Yeah, there's family, but also a close friend, just someone that's going to have your back when things get a little turbulent. Um, someone that you can call up and have a chat about, and someone that, or even a close um, friend at work. Uh, who's got your back that you can so I, I'll sometimes speak to my agent in advance and say hey um, I'm not feeling great today or I'm really worried about this or this is maybe too physically demanding um, I need some time off for my I am um, to go and have a blood test for instance I try and do that in advance as possible and actually it makes my life a hell of a lot easier um, the next question I have here is have you ever had a bad experience telling someone about your condition have you ever had a bad experience telling someone about your condition um in all honesty i haven't and uh, it goes back to what i was saying is we shouldn't underestimate people and be concerned that they're going to have a reaction to it um we should own it and not be ashamed and in all honesty if those you're associating yourself with have a bad reaction to it or um, don't empower you, then you don't really want to be associating yourself with those kinds of people. It's, it's something that I've realized as well, as chatting to a friend about is, and again, this really has a, a really positive effect on me, is surround yourself with the people that are going to empower you and make you feel good. Sometimes you can be associated pe with people who just completely drain you and it makes you feel 10 times worse. Don't, <laughs> basically. Um, in terms of bad experiences, it's not really a bad experience, but sometimes when I tell people, they go, um, oh, that's, uh, so you've got IBS. And in all honesty, I've gone, uh, yeah, because I don't want to get into a whole conversation about Crohn's disease. Why? I don't know, and I should. I should own it, like I've said. Um, and I kind of dampen down having the disease. Um, and I shouldn't because it's, it, they're not the same and we react differently. And also, even though, yes, some people go, oh yeah, you've got Crohn's disease. So I kind of know, and, and like I said, we, our bodies react differently and some may have more severe reactions than others. And if uh, you shouldn't basically dampen down the effect it's having on you, don't be afraid of asking or telling people about the disease and, and don't be afraid of, of, of asking for what you need that's going to help you make your life easier. Um, okay, the next question here is, can Crohn's or colitis cause mental health issues? So yeah, it's kind of what we've been talking about. Again, um, it's important to mention that yes, we are Crohn sufferers, but how our bodies react, how our bodies yeah react may be different. So for me, like I mentioned earlier, I feel like there is a link from my uh, my brain to my 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 gut, and it's something that I I'm I want to explore more because I've noticed a huge difference. Um, you know, I, I've reached out to the Crohn's and Colitis UK charity in the past for help when it comes to the bowel, and I've also reached out to other avenues to help with my um, state of mind. And I'll be really honest with you, the hardest part about doing that is making the call. Well, for me anyway, reaching out and asking for help seemed to be the hardest thing. I was really nervous uh, when I made the call. Um, and yeah, oh, um, you kind of feel in a way um, that you've, you, in some way that you've failed, especially for guys, you, you feel like you feel very vulnerable. Um, and whenever I've reached for help, I've been Im immensely overwhelmed by the person who's on the other end of the phone being incredibly supportive and understanding. And it feels strange because it's like a stranger um, and just someone listening and just being articulate and just open is so empowering and overwhelming i think once you overcome making that call you just suddenly feel like a weight's being lifted and things start to change now it's interesting i say that the amount of times i've stopped and started 
working on my mental health. I let, I've let kind of work get in the way. I've not really prioritized it. And I've also felt as well, I'm, I'm very impatient and I'm very much like, okay, I'm going to go and get some help. I've made the call. I'll continue it for a week. And then I go, why is it not working? Why am I, why am I not feeling different? And the only piece of advice I can give is don't expect things to change overnight. It takes consistency. And, and the person I was working with, I remember this, <laughs> it, it can be expensive at times. And, you know, I'm, I'm very privileged to, to kind of get that kind of support. Um, and it's still expensive. And I was like, oh, I'm not, <laughs> I'm going to try and short change this and, and, uh, just kind of do, you know, sessions or speak to someone, you know, like once a month, twice, you know, cause I wanted to try and <laughs> save some money. <laughs> and, uh, and I really commend the person that I was working with to say, we're not going to do this. I'll just come back to me when you can do it weekly. And initially I was like, oh, this person's just trying to get more money out of me here. And, um, but once I did, and over time, I started to notice huge um, differences. I could just breathe again. Um, and it felt like I just, it was giving me room to kind of clear everything away just so I could focus on myself a bit more, kind of clear stuff away so I could really focus on the effect Crohn's was ha having on me. And it gave me space to think rationally and make, um, make uh, new choices and not rushing into things either, it just gave me some space to breathe. I think lockdown um, especially has, has really helped me with this because I don't think I would have taken the leap. Um, it's so easy, especially as an actor, a, a, a job comes in and suddenly that becomes your main focus and I'm trying to find balance. I think that's really important um, when you're suffering from Crohn's is to find balance and it's something that I'm still struggling to do but lockdown in a way forced me to do that and and confront myself and it could it was hard at times but it's something that really needed to be done but we shouldn't wait for an unfortunate circumstance like lockdown to happen we should try and carve out time for that because I've realized like acting has been so important to me and I absolutely love it but life uh, comes first it really does um, what's the point of working if we can't enjoy our lives and, and look after ourselves? So I say this, it can be difficult, difficult at times, but I, I always try and say to myself, take the time that you need to recover um, and repair and love yourself a bit more, take care of yourself. It has huge impacts on, uh, impacts on your gut, but also your, your um, state of mind as well. Um, Oh, just to, just to go back to that. So <laughs> with, with, when you're taking that leap of faith, I'd, I'd say, don't give up too early, be consistent. It, it's going to take time for, for things to change. Um, and there is a wealth of support out there. You are not on your own. Um, and don't ever think that you're on your own with it. Um, it's just reaching out, putting it out in the universe and you'd be amazed who kind of takes your hand on the other end. Um, the next question here is, what advice would you give writers, actors who have Crohn's or colitis? Now, it goes back to the thing that I was saying before. I've seemed to just revolve my whole life around being an actor. Um, in a way, I do that because I feel like it's going to make me a better actor, and it doesn't. Actually, what makes you a better actor is finding balance and it's something I'm really striving to do and actually once I go back to work I'm better I, I'm, I'm more instinctive and um, I think it's important I know we touched on this earlier um, yes I yes sorry um, I know that we touched I was reading a little note there and <laughs> um, I know that we we touched on this earlier but don't be afraid of being upfront right from the beginning when you take on an acting job um, about what it about your condition and what it is that you'll need 
as well. And it's amazing how accommodating people can be on, on, uh, if you tell them as soon as possible. Also, we know as actors that roles can be incredibly demanding as well. So I'd say don't try and be a superhero. Don't try and be a, a, a martyr. If it's something that you can't do, you don't have to do it. Just be very clear. And also as well, like weigh things up as well. Like what's really important. And again, this is something that I'm kind of battling with as well. Is just kind of tr trying to get your priorities right. You know, your health comes first as well. Um, yes <laughs> it's important that yes like i said that the 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 acting in is important but also um rest periods as well um so we'll look at the next question here i'm seeing if there's anything else that i've not covered um yes i'm going to play devil's advocate here as well i think one if you start looking after yourself owning the disease as well is don't let it limit you don't let it don't let it get in the way don't be afraid of of challenging yourself and that's also important that you do that if you're looking after yourself and you're putting yourself first but it's amazing as well how resilient the human body is um it's amazing I, i've kind of put a lot of things off and sometimes i've been a, a, afraid of kind of pushing myself i've been too concerned and now kind of now that I'm, i feel like i'm a little bit more in control i'm now testing my limits a little bit but also making sure that within all of that i have rest periods and i find balance it's no point just taking on every job um it's really not worth it and you're not going to do you're not going to do your best performance um the next question here i have is are you pickier about what roles you take because of your Crohn's? Um, am I pickier? Yes, I am pickier. Um, when I say pickier, um, I, I go for roles that challenge me, but I'm making sure as well that I'm the one that's in the driving seat. Um, I try and ask myself now, I'll weigh everything up. Is it worth it? Uh, am I able to put my body through that? And there's something so amazing in terms of the power of saying no uh, is so liberating because you own it. You own your own decisions, especially as an actor. You don't or you feel that you don't have that much control and the industry di dictates your actions. Um, and actually, that's not right. You know, and we should strive to have our control and own it. It goes back to owning the disease and being very clear about what it is that you need and what it is that you want. And also just putting things into perspective. Like I would just jump at like every opportunity, but now I'm like, in terms of like having this disease for so long, I kind of go, is it worth it? Um, you know, I, it's, it's taken me, a while to kind of do this but I kind of make sure when I finish a job that I, I am gonna have a, I have a break and I'm very clear with the people that I work with work with to say I'm gonna I'm gonna take some time out now I'm in a very privi privileged position to do that but it's amazing how accommodating people can be and you've just got to be honest and open about what it is that you need um the next question that I've got here is how do you motivate yourself um, to stay active? So I've noticed that when I do exercise, and whether it would be a walk in the park or a run or a hit workout, I, I have noticed that it does have an impact, uh, a positive impact on my gut, especially in the mornings if I'm feeling a little um, gassy as clay i call it <laughs> um or a bit grumbly um i i'll get out and do a hit workout like it during um lockdown i've been doing um 
a lot of Joe Wicks workouts. I know a lot of people have the 20 minute HIIT workouts. You, you don't need any equipment, probably just um, a mat of some sort, a yoga mat. Um, and they're great. It, feel, it feels like it gets my energy up as well. And I feel a lot better. It feels like when I'm moving, it feels like the gases or everything's just kind of passing, passes through. Um, and it helps. And also having a bit more energy is, is good as well. Um, I was going to say that the hardest part, especially with being active, is motivating yourself to do it, especially when you're feeling fatigued. I've noticed like just kind of peeling yourself off, off of your chair, getting into your sports gear, the amount of times where I'm like, oh, I just can't be bothered to do this. But I'd, I'd say if you're, if you're feeling really like ill, don't. <laughs> but try if you can sometimes to just push yourself to do it even if it's just a walk around the house just to um, walk around them um, you know do a block of your your kind of local area just to kind of get some oxygen and clear your head also really helps and a lot of people are working from home as well so it's good trying trying to remain being active but also as well playing devil's advocate here but if you are feeling fatigued, it's okay sometimes. I'm one to put so much pressure on myself all the time. I feel like I always have to be doing something. And actually, what I call doing nothing is actually doing something. And that is actually sometimes more important than constantly being on it all the time. It's okay to just go, actually, you know what? I'm feeling really fatigued. I had all this planned today and I'm not. I'm going to just put my feet up. <laughs> I'm going to just take it a little bit easier just to get a little bit of respite and actually you end up being more productive and it also helps things settle a little bit. Um, this is also like a perfect time for me to, uh, to also mention that I'm doing Run the Night. Uh, I've, it's all, it, it, it was set up by Crohn's and Colitis UK charity and it's a great way to bring the community together. It's a great way of also being active. And again, it's, it's creating an awareness and it's also getting us to share our individual stories. It's the first time I've, I've worked with Crohn's and Colitis UK uh, on, on this campaign. It's the first time I've done Run the Night and my brilliant and supportive girlfriend, Anjali Mahindra, is also doing, doing it with me as well. And it's also a chance for me to kind of say a thank you to her and to all the partners and friends out there who've been immensely supportive and listening to me blabber on about having Crohn's disease, but also picking me up when I'm really low. Um, there was a time when things got quite bad and I was rushed to hospital and Anjali was brilliant about um, getting me to the hospital. I couldn't even open my eyes and um, she was brilliant, just, just knew exactly what to do, got my medications. She's always at hand to you know, she's always on hand for me to talk about having the disease. So I'm immensely grateful to her. So I'm really glad that we're both doing Run the Night and um, creating more of an awareness and um, talking about it, breaking the silence. Um, I'm hoping actually that the, the, the amazing Crohn's and Colitis team will post my link to my Just Giving page. Please do it. Thanks. <laughs> um, the next question I have here is, um, I've got five minutes left. Um, what are your tips for tackling um, fatigue? Um, yeah, so again, everybody is, is different. Everyone um, has their own way of doing things as I do, and I'm still kind of discovering new things. Um, firstly, it's okay to be fatigued, which I, I mentioned. Don't push yourself. Challenge yourself. Don't be afraid of challenging yourself, but listen to your body. And it's okay to to rest. So don't try and push through it if you really, really don't want to. Um, you, you know, your both your body and mind need rest. So listen to it. Um, I've noticed as well for me that diet just generally ha is having a huge impact on my um, uh, Crohn's disease as well. And I'm I'm kind of trying different things as well and seeing what suits me, what doesn't but I'm trying to be more conscious about my diet. You know, this is a northerner talking here. I, I like, you know, I like my fry ups, I like my beer. And sometimes it can be hard um, cutting those things out. But also I guess, look, 
we've got to treat ourselves here and there. And I think if you can be 80% on it and 20%, you know, you're going to slip, that's fine. But yeah, diet has a huge impact as well on feeling fatigued. Um, exercise, I know um, we, we talked about um, and about exercise can just help you get some energy. Um, also as well, if you're constantly feeling fatigued, um, you know, don't be afraid of contacting your IBD team. Um, sometimes I'm like, I don't want to bother them. I don't want to kind of call them about trivial things. I think it's not trivial. Always seek advice um, because, you know, you may be feeling fatigued because you might not be getting um, enough nutrients. There could be nutrient deficiencies. So you might need a blood test. It's really important to get regular blood tests. You know, we are sometimes on biologics and they need to be monitored and they can have certain kind of effects on you. And um, so, yeah, make sure you're constantly getting monitored and don't be afraid of reaching out to the IBD team or even Crohn's and colitis. I, um, I know I talked about this earlier, but it felt like I was quite nervous ringing the helpline. Um, I don't know why I was, I was nervous, but I was just amazed by the amount of support that they gave. And I didn't feel like the conversation was rushed. And I felt like I was talking with, to somebody who just got it. Um, and I felt a huge amount of relief. I didn't feel like um, I was on my own. So don't be afraid of, ca of calling them at any time. Um, I know the, the, the team will probably be posting their number now and their, and their hours of operation as well. Um, also, fatigue may be a result of mental health as well. Um, you know, let's not just concentrate on the gut here. Let's really think about the mind as well. So, again, don't be afraid of reaching out and, um, and asking for help as well, uh, because it's there. Uh, what you put out, you'll get back. <laughs> um, just something I wanted to touch on as well about uh, mental health is that we shouldn't underestimate the impact Crohn's disease itself has on our mental health. Um, you know, let, let's not underestimate, you know, body image issues that arise because of, uh, you know, weight changes or surgery even, and also um, disordered eating habits from you know, which, you know, certain foods can be triggering and um, the constant kind of stop and start of having flare ups like I had is, is bound to have an effect on your mental health as well. Or, and, and, you know, depression can arise from pain that you're, you're constantly experiencing. Um, and that's why I just kind of want to say, you know, before I kind of end on this is, excuse me, is don't, that's our 45 minutes over but don't be afraid of reaching out to people you know right now I was incredibly nervous starting this and right now like after like 40 minutes of talking to a camera I already feel like I feel more at ease it's constantly it's helping me and I'm going to continue having the conversation and and reaching out to people and hearing your stories um, and hearing how I can improve and how I can better. Cause it's like I said, it's a constant um, evolving disease, but we're all in this together. So thank you so much for joining me for my first ever Facebook Q and A. Hopefully I'll do another one soon. Um, keep well, keep healthy, stay safe. And I hope to see you soon. That's a lot. Thank you. <laughs>